Alright, so Ben, what do you yeah. think about uh, music industry recently? Uh, recently? Actually, you know, I don't really listen to the radio, so I'm not really sure uh, about popular music.、Mm. But、um, one thing I do is I read a lot about music news.、Oh, so,、okay. one thing I've been noticing is with all of these new programs and websites、mm-hmm. like iTunes,、mm-hmm. Spotify,、yeah. the free music,、um, like YouTube, so, YouTube yeah. yeah, YouTube as well. Like,、um, sometimes musicians. You know, we don't, no one buy CDs anymore. No. Right? When was the last time you bought a CD? Do you remember? I don't even remember. Probably like 10 years ago. Right. So, like, with the, with the internet and the increase of everyone having high speed internet all、mm-hmm. around the world,、yeah. I think the, it, the industry is changing a lot, especially for musicians and how they get paid. Yeah. So,、sure. um, it's interesting in that, in that kind of way.、Um, but, I think,、uh, I think it's a little un. It's, I think we need to change how we pay musicians because people can't make money anymore. You know, f i r t used to sell CDs、mm-hmm. and receive a profit from that, but now people are on YouTube downloading music illegally. Yes. Do you remember those programs that people,、um, what were they called? Like they're like download or peer to peer downloading software、mm-hmm. programs. Like,、uh, I think one of them was called Napster. It was one of the biggest. Was it? Yeah,、okay. yeah, it was huge. So you would download this. I remember it was about 15 years ago. You would download the program onto your computer、mm-hmm. and you'd search for something. Let's say Madonna, which was actually my first song that I ever <laughs> downloaded <laughs>、okay. illegally, was Madonna because I liked her when I was a kid. Okay. Before my punk, before my punk、oh, days. Right, right.、Um, and so, yeah, you type in the name of the artist you want to listen to、mm-hmm. and, and you. Down, and all, the, all these songs come up that people have placed on the internet.、Right. And you can download that and you can keep it and listen to it as many times as you want for free. Yeah. And you didn't pay, Mad- I didn't pay Madonna anything. No. Right? So,、um, in that way, I think、um, the music industry has changed a lot. Yeah, I in, think so. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if it's good or bad.、Mm-hmm. Probably bad. <laughs> you think? For, I mean, for artists, I think、for、it's、artists. not good. Yeah. Especially. If they're not as popular, so if they、mm-hmm. do not have a very big record deal,、yeah. um, how do they, you know, how are they going to get profit? If there's someone、mm. like、uh, less popular, someone independent artist, like the lower, lower level, not so popular artist, they don't make money. No. Yeah, But、so. I mean, I think, it, you know, recently, I think it's a good thing that people sort of can find.、Um, Known famous singers on YouTube or on the internet.、Um, I listen to radio and、uh, while I drive, I listen to radio often and I also listen to music on YouTube. And the other day, accidentally, I found like a, maybe it's not even a singer, just an ordinary person singing somebody's song. But I, heard, I thought he is great and I start listening to his songs and I subscribe to his channel. And in that way, people, no unknown, well, famous people、mm-hmm. can become famous and they can make money. And sort of, in that sense, YouTube or those, or, you know, internet、um, websites or apps kind of gave them opportunity. For- that's true. So I think I, agree, I totally agree with you. And I think that in that way, that's, I guess, YouTube and the, the internet has helped. Lesser known artists、yeah. mm-hmm. become exposed, yes, right? Exactly. So there's exposure with YouTube, right? So there's all these view count, view count right?、Mm-hmm. So, and you can suggest a YouTube video to a friend, you can share it on your Facebook page. Yeah. So, definitely in that way, YouTube has totally changed.、Um, have you heard the, the term go viral? Have、no. you heard that before? What, what does that mean? So, go viral means that a video that's put on YouTube.、Mm-hmm. Gets a lot of hits, a lot of views very,、yeah. very, very quickly. Yeah. So it gets seen by a lot of people. So, viral, like a virus, right? It spreads、ah, through the internet.、Okay. So, there are some unknown artists、yes. that started out with just a YouTube video.、Oh. And that video went viral, right? right. It, it received many views, many people saw it. And now they are popular musicians that people know about. Right, like Justin Bieber, yeah? You know what? I think you're right. He. 
Didn't his parents put him on YouTube when he was a kid? I guess so, yeah. I think That's something. That's how right, so, he started, yeah. So in, yeah, in that way, you can become a pop, uh, a pop, a pop star, yeah. right? Just from posting a, a YouTube video mm. that gets seen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard that you were in a band when you were a high school kid. Yeah, actually, I was um, all four years. I was in high school. I oh, was yeah? I was in a, actually in a few bands, but um, I was the yeah I was in one um, pretty early on when I was a kid. Yeah, me and four of my friends. All right. So what's the do you, did you have a name for your band <laughs> or bands? Uh, yeah. Um, th well, kind of. I guess the more the serious band I was in, we were called Lucky Number Two. I know it sounds <laughs> stupid. And I thought it did too, actually. But I, I, I came into the band. I was asked to join. Okay. I didn't start it. Right. I just, I, I, they said, hey, we need a bass player. Do you play bass? And I said, yeah, I do. I play bass. Uh, why? And they said, well, we need, a, we need a bass player. So can you come and try out, you know, audition? And I did. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, hey, you know, what's your, you know, what's the, what's the band name? And they're like, Lucky number two. I was like, oh, yeah. wow, so lame. But <laughs> I wanted to play music, so okay. I just went along with it and said, yeah, sure. Right, why so why why did they name you the band Lucky number two? You know, you know what? The reason? Uh, the, I don't think there was a reason. I think they just, they were, they at one point, they just, when they were um, thinking about what to do, they couldn't decide on something. So they just came up, they just decided something and just went with it. They said, okay, we're going to decide this and we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, lucky number two. Yeah. Right. Uh, so what kind of music did you used to play? So it was like a uh, punk, punk mm -hmm. music. Okay. So yeah. And, uh, which actually at the time was not very popular among young people right. in my town. So um, yeah. I mean, I'm not really a big fan of music. I don't really know anything about music. So what's punk music like? What's punk music yeah. like? Well, our band was like, uh, so we had two guitar players, mm -hmm. um, a, a bass player and a drummer. And one of the guitar players sang too. So punk music is fast. It's right. fast and the drums are also fast and uh, the, the vocals are usually kind of yell, kind of yelling uh -huh. or screaming in a way. Um, and not always, but sometimes bands are political, right? Right. So they, political. like we had a political, um, I don't know how you would say, but like, uh, we, at that time it was 2008 Yeah. and, um, or 2000, sorry, that's wrong. 2004. And, uh, yeah, president Bush was in, was, was, you know, George Bush was a president yeah. yes. and, uh, you know, we didn't like him. We were kind of on the oh. other side. And, uh, so a lot of our songs were kind of politically driven. Right. So our lyrics so were about like, an, or... yeah, like anti-president <laughs> lyrics, uh, like that. I don't know. It's, it's kind of funny because one of our songs actually, cause you know, the American flag is mm -hmm. red, white, and blue, the yes. colors. So one of our songs was called Red, White, Black, and Blue, like a oh. bruise. Like, and so it's kind of, I don't know, we were angsty and like, it was, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's how I would describe punk music at that time. Right. Fast, politically driven lyrics okay. and uh, screaming vocals. Mm. Yeah. Oh, sorry to ask about, you know, sorry to ask stupid questions, but no, uh, no, go ahead. So the guitar that yeah. you used to use, it's, it's that one that sort of connects to the amplifiers yes yeah? not it, like acoustic guitar. no no oh. no everyone played electric <laughs> loud loud okay. music yeah. loud music yeah very loud guitars okay why do you why do you or why did you like punk music uh well i don't know i was a high school student and i was i was angry about life and my parents i didn't really get along with my parents mm -hmm. and so it was a good outlet for me a way to express myself outside of school and mm -hmm. so it was very useful in that way That's did you did like you it. have uh did you have a chance to sort of perform in public or yeah you know it's funny because uh we thought you know what we're, we're you know this is when you're 15 years old you can't really think too far ahead yeah. in the future but we thought you know we're gonna we're gonna be popular you know people <laughs> are gonna like this <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna get big and you know, maybe we don't have to go to college. Maybe we can just play music for the rest of our lives. Right. 
Um, but yeah, no, to back to your question, sorry. We, uh, we did play, we probably played a show as mm -hmm. we would call it, or like we would play at different venues around different live houses around yeah. in our town, oh, cool. uh, probably like twice a month. All right. And um, we'd sell tickets. I'd go actually like we'd make a flyer and I would go to the top of the stairwell in the yeah. high school and I would take all these flyers and just throw them down oh. the stairs <laughs> just and have the flyers, you know. I don't know. It sounds so. It sounds funny to talk about it now, but yeah. So oh, we played right. like twice, twice a month for about three years. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah, so you yeah. used to make money from that then? <sighs> uh, I don't know about money, but we did make enough to pay for our CDs that we would record. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. So no, it, it wasn't profitable in any mm -hmm. way. It was just fun, and you know, I met so many different people from being in a band. So it was really, really. It was really nice, you know. Socially, it was really good for I think a high school student like myself. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for asking. So, what are some superhero skills that you would like to have? Mm, um, there's lots of different types of skills out there that have my attention, but I think the most important skill, or the most useful skill for me, would be uh, to clone myself. Um, so there's an anime, uh, Naruto, and mm -hmm. coincidentally we're in Japan as well. Um, in Naruto, you're able to clone yourself, and when you clone yourself, um, you're able to um, still retain all the knowledge that your clone is doing. For example, I could be here doing an interview, and my clone could be outside swimming and practicing swimming. Oh. And then when my clone disappears, I'll still retain all the knowledge I have from swimming, even though I was performing an interview here. And okay. so I think that would be very useful in learning a lot of different types of things. For example, languages, practicing sports, cooking food. Um, and uh, it would be very efficient with my time and I'd be able to yeah. complete everything on my schedule. Multitasking. So, exactly. <laughs> multi uh, multitasking at its finest. So that's definitely a superhero power that I would love to have. Mm -hmm. And what about yourself? What, what would you like to do? Oh, I'm not sure. When I was little, I al always wanted to be able to fly or breathe underwater because I really wanted to be a mermaid when I was little. <laughs> uh, but I think now maybe just teleportation would be really nice. Mm. I wouldn't have to walk everywhere. <laughs> I'm a little lazy. Uh, I wouldn't have to sit on the plane for like 10 hours when yeah. I visit my uh, family in the States. Mm -hmm. I hate flying. It's just really boring. Yeah. So yeah, definitely teleportation, I think. Okay. That's a, that's a very interesting uh, uh, superhero ability to have. Yeah. Uh, definitely makes life a lot quicker. You won't have to sit in a rush hour either when yeah. you're driving home from work. And I could just teleport to all the different places and countries that exactly. I wanted to go to. That's yeah. pretty amazing as well, yeah. Uh, so what else, what other types of superhero powers would you have besides teleportation? Uh, maybe superhuman strength. Mm -hmm. That would be cool, I think. Uh, just walking around lifting people up and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> or, or lifting up buildings like, uh, yeah, like Superman. Yeah, like Superman, yeah. Stopping asteroids and... <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, people would definitely notice that I had superpowers on it. Maybe that's not... You might want to compete idea. in some uh, strong, strong man or think power building competitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I would, lifting, yeah. I would become famous. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good career move. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it would be purely talent and not hard work. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but I guess you'd have to practice your superhero strength I guess. by building uh, by picking up different things. Yeah, and uh, and practicing not uh, using too much strength and crushing things. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, that's very cool. And, and, uh, are there any other, um, powers that you would like to have? Um, the one superhero that's my favorite is Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I saw all of his movies as a little kid. And so I think, um, having, uh, webs coming out of your wrist, being able to fly yeah. between skyscrapers, being able to stick people onto walls, fighting crime, that would be really cool, but just mainly for the amusement aspect of flying around, yeah. um, slingshotting different things um, with your web. So that would be very cool um, and a very unique skill to have. So yeah. <laughs> um, that superpower would be amazing to have, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's your favorite superhero? Yeah, I would say that uh, he's the superhero that I relate to the most. Mm -hmm. Just recently, Spider-Man High School came out. And so it depicted Peter Parker, Spider-Man, uh, in high school. And so it was, it was a very fun movie and uh, definitely relates a lot to high school. 
and uh, it was very fun to watch, and I really enjoyed that. So definitely Spider-Man is my favorite superhero, yeah. and I uh, really enjoyed uh, his movie, and definitely would love to have his, um, his web shooting abilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so Viasen, what do you think is the most important, hard work or talent, or what is mo more useful? Mm, that's an interesting question because I think they both play a role in whatever task that you're doing. But personally, I think that hard work is more important than talent. And I'll give you a couple examples of why I feel hard work is more important. I think um, in order to master any skill, whether it's singing, whether it's dancing, whether it's performing well at a task, you need to stay focused on the task at hand. And um, some people are naturally good at that task. For example, um, if I'm really quick at typing on a computer, um, I'll be able to print out multiple spreadsheets, complete a lot of work, and finish my assignments faster. However, um, I believe to really go above and beyond and master that skill, with that talent, hard work needs to be um, attributed as well. Um, without hard work, you might, even if you're good at typing on a computer, you might not want to feel like typing on a computer. You might be lazy, and uh, you, just not, you, you just might not want to do that task. But hard work trains you to become good at a task and do it very well, master it, and become efficient with your time. And so that's why I think hard work um, outweighs talent because um, um, I think there's more dedication in hard work, there's regimen in hard work, and um, once you've mastered hard work in a specific skill, I think you can master it a lot more easier than someone who's naturally talented at that task. Yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, I think you pretty much summed it up, yeah. though. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I agree that hard work is uh, more important than talent. And mm. you could be very talented, but if you don't have the like the work ethic, mm -hmm. uh, then it doesn't really matter. Like, Or especially if we're thinking about uh, getting jobs or... yeah, Yeah. So yeah, hard work, mm -hmm. definitely. Is there a task that you spend a lot of time at and given that hard work to master? <clears throat> uh, I started playing guitar three years ago. Okay. Uh, and I never played an instrument before. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm like, usually I can be very lazy when learning new things. Like I get mm. uh, unmotivated very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but one day it was just like, okay, I have a guitar lying around. I just really want to learn how to play now. And I just put in a lot of work and hours, yeah. and now I play the guitar. And I'm like, I am very proud of myself because yeah, I put that, that work into it. Um, and like someone, like maybe I, uh, if I was born with the talent to just play guitar, that would be uh, cool. But mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't have the same like uh, satisfaction of, of like putting my mind to it and yeah. getting good. Yeah, so... Um, I don't know. What yeah, I was well, that's say. A, that's a good yeah. example of uh, <laughs> using hard work and uh, something that you like to do. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so, do you think there's any exceptions where talent is more important than hard work? I think so. Like, uh, maybe especially in the um, entertainment business. Mm -hmm. Like, you could put in a lot of hours, uh, but if you want to be really good. Mm -hmm. Like uh, a really famous actor or a really famous singer, they'll they'll, they'll choose the um, the more talented ones, and often mm -hmm. the most talented ones are the ones with the predisposed talent. Okay, if that makes sense. Like, no, I don't know what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, here's an example. I yeah. Have. Um, so one of my interests is basketball, and uh, usually uh, the highest level of basketball is I would say the NBA. Mm -hmm. um, the National Basketball Association, which is run in America and mm -hmm. in Canada. And um, usually lots of basketball players are very tall. Right, uh, right. For that reason, they're able to have longer limbs. They're able to do a lot more things with the basketball. For example, jump, shoot, run um, with the basketball and play the sport um, at a more higher um, level than mm -hmm. someone who didn't have those natural physical traits. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that in that case, talent someone's talented at basketball um, would be at a slightly more advantageous position mm -hmm. than someone who, for example, myself, I'm 5'6", who puts a lot of hard work into basketball, but mm -hmm. just can't beat someone who's 6'4", and uh, just runs extremely quick because they're talented. So right. um, that might be one example of um, where talent 
in some cases beats hard work. Yeah. And I think the same goes mm -hmm. for singing, for example. Like, mm -hmm. you could practice singing, but if you're just born with a very beautiful voice, then maybe mm -hmm. you're uh, better off uh, performing, for example. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, Jen, we're going to talk about uh, media and technology, you know, like uh, phones and music, things like that. Mm -hmm. So the first one is, how addicted are you to your phone? Like, how long can you go without using your phone? Oh, that's a difficult question. <laughs> because, like, I'm very, I would say I'm very addicted to my phone. Because, I like, I keep on checking it every five minutes. Like, I feel like without my phone, my head doesn't, like, my brain stops working, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Wow. So I would say like the maximum I can stay without it would be one or two hours. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I mean, if you asked me in the past, yeah, I could like stay without it for a while. But nowadays, like I don't even own a watch. So that would be like, you know, my time right. as well. So um, I have to keep checking it. Wow. What about you? We are polar opposites. Actually, I am so bad about not using my phone, and that's a smartphone. Actually, I have two. I have an Android Galaxy, and I have an iPhone. Mm -hmm. uh, I set them down and forget to forget where they are and go, like, days without actually checking them sometimes. And I'll go to work, and somebody will be like, are you mad at me? I'm like, I'm trying to reach you, <laughs> and you won't. And I'm like, no, I'm not mad at you. Why? And I'm like, oh, I haven't even checked my phone in, like, two days. So, that would that, like that sounds so crazy to me because I could never go without my phone without two day like for two days. Yeah, well, one there's a couple of things. One, it's old school, right? And two, I get all my information on the internet on a PC, so I'm working, so I get everything on the internet, like Facebook, um, news, stuff like that. The computer, like you said, tells the time, so I actually forget about my phone. Okay, then I think if I have a PC, then I would also forget my phone. Right. Yeah. But your generation, you're like, it's all in your hand, right? Yeah, that's right, because it's more convenient. Have you heard the term second brain? No. Yeah, somebody at some teacher conference was saying that phones are students' second brain. So <laughs> they use it. It's like, you know, you hold it and you have two brains, one in your hand and one in your head. I would agree. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's weird. So how about uh, music? Like, how addicted are you to music? Do you have to have music playing all the time? Not all the time, but then I would have to listen to music once, at least once a day. Because, you know, it just refreshes your mind and you can just, like, um, relieve your, from your stress mm. through music. Mm. But it depends upon what kind of music you have. What about you? Like, do you like listening to music? No, I do, but I, I'm not a music aficionado, and I always listen to the same 10 songs. I think a lot of older people, we kind of get in that rut where I listen, honestly, to music. And I'm from the 80s, right? So mm -hmm. I'm 48. I'm almost 50. So I love music from the 70s and 80s, and that's all I listen to. That's understandable. Actually, I also have a lot of old songs, but, like, I just don't listen. I just, like, it's not like I just keep on listening to those music. I actually keep on adding more music, more songs to it, so that my playlist is, like, you know, update, like, is updated every now and then. And I think if you have good music, you will actually be addicted to it. Maybe you don't have good music. <laughs> no, the music <laughs> from the 80s is good. Um, okay, so what about, like... TV. Do you watch TV every day? Uh, not so much because lately I've been so busy at school. So I cannot really, yeah, I don't watch much TV. But the, during my week, during weekends, yeah, I do like to like uh, watch new movies or different series. Mm. What about, are you one of those people that will stay up till 2, 3, 4 in the morning just watching YouTube videos? <laughs> not YouTube videos, but yes, if I'm addicted to some series, then I would just binge watch and uh, I mean, watch it like watch them till five in the morning. Yeah. Like what shows do you watch? Uh, shows. Recently, I've been watching Suits. It's like it's a, it's a new series and it's really good. You should try it too. Okay. Oh, I'll have to check it out. Thanks. You're welcome, Todd. So, um, 
I'm here with Chantal, and we both are from the United States, and we both are teachers in Japan. So I thought we would talk a little bit about some of the stereotypes that people might have in other countries,、uh, for example, Japan or other countries, about Americans. So, first, we're going to talk about hamburgers. Okay. Okay, so hamburgers. How often do you actually eat a hamburger? Ah,、uh, hamburgers. I would say、hmm, it's actually not that often. Although I love hamburgers, I love them very much, but maybe only a couple times a month or so. Yeah, I agree. I think hamburgers is the one thing that does not meet the stereotype that we don't eat them that often. Like I never have hamburgers in America. Ah, okay. Pretty、yeah. much never. Like I, I'll have them if somebody's barbecuing it, maybe for a picnic or something.、Um, yeah, and if I do eat fast food, it's usually not a hamburger.、Um, I eat something else. Like I eat tacos or burritos. Right?、Yeah. I don't eat. Hamburgers. So that's one. I think hamburgers don't really match the stereotype myth. Yeah, I agree. agree. I agree, especially because I know many many of my students here in Japan. They will ask me often what I eat for lunch, and before I respond, because they're playing a joke on me, they'll say like, "Oh, hamburger, hamburger," <laughs> and、yeah. I have to tell them that you know, I, I now I do live in Japan, but. In the United States, I don't typically eat hamburgers every day,、yeah. but that is a lot of what they think. They think that、uh, I eat hamburgers regularly, or at least fast food. But their image of fast food is only hamburgers. So true. And actually, the the funny、um, side story to that, or contrary story, would be, you know, sushi. So we both teach in Japan, and I think most people think that you eat sushi all the time in Japan, and it's almost the equivalent of the hamburger. You don't eat it that much. That is so true. Right. So true. I cannot say how true that is. <laughs> Or、uh, another one we're talking about、um, stereotypes would be sumo. So Japanese people are not that into sumo, really, right? But it's an iconic thing. Yeah. So that brings us to the point of baseball. Ah, yes. So, do you actually like baseball? I I do. I love baseball. I do. And I used to go to some games in the United States in San Francisco. I went to several. Giants games growing up,、um, yeah. So I do enjoy baseball. Do you enjoy baseball? I, I do. I have to admit, like I, I played you know baseball when I was younger. I loved baseball,、um, but I do think it's not as popular as people think it is. You know what I mean?、Yes. I think that like a lot of people like it. You like it. I like it. But a lot of people could care less. Yes. About baseball. Most of the time, I think I hear people say it's it's a slow sport. It's boring. No one wants to watch it. They're、right. much more inclined to watch basketball or football instead of baseball. So true. Okay, so Meg, we're talking about baking, and in the last one, in the last interview, you mentioned cake pops and some other stuff. Now you also mentioned truffles.、Mm. What what is a truffle? A truffle is、um, it's a little chocolate candy, or it can be not so tiny, but it's not huge. It's like bite size, bite size chocolate candy, with something on the inside that's called ganache, which is、uh, can be a chocolate or a different flavor, kind of creamy or a little more firm, and then coated in chocolate. So it's a chocolate candy, basically. Okay.、Uh, Now I sometimes hear the word truffles like something that pigs find under、mm. trees. Is yeah, that the same different, word? No. Well, same word, same word. But those are a type of mushroom, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So there's truffles mushroom, and then there's truffles chocolate candy. So I guess be careful which one you're ordering if you're at the store. <laughs> right. They have nothing to do with each other. No. I, I mean, maybe someone has made a mushroom chocolate truffle before.、Right. I'm not sure, but not me. <laughs> okay. So are truffles easy to make? Ah,、uh, they are. They're time-consuming, so I don't think they're difficult to make. But you have to have the time to put in because you need to make the inside chocolate part first and mix together the ingredients, and then form. I always did it by hand. Form all the little balls、uh, so that you can dip them in chocolate. And so one batch, I could usually get maybe 60 truffles. So probably I had to spend a few hours working on a batch of truffles. Wow! Can you go through the process? Like, how do you make them from start to finish?、Mm. So, probably my favorite ones are like an espresso chocolate kind, where、um, you would I need some chopped up 
chocolate, more like baking chocolate or really dark chocolate, or if you want milk chocolate, you can use it. And then uh, mix that with some heavy cream and butter on the stove. And uh, if there's any flavor you're going to add. And so if it's like a coffee flavor, you can add some coffee grinds and later strain them out. So it has that flavor. And, and then, that's the, the inner part that right, you're making. That's yeah. like, what's that called again? Ganache. Ganache. Mm. Okay. And so um, then you, you've made that, and so it's still pretty thin, more liquidy. And so you need to put it in the fridge to let it firm up for, it can take, that recipe can take a few hours before it's ready. And then once it's ready, I just use like a small spoon to scoop a little out and then use my hands to roll it into like a ball shape. And then uh, let that sit. And I might have to put it back in the fridge because your hands kind of warm the chocolate back up. And then once it's out, you can use a special dipping fork or just a regular small fork and have some melted coating chocolate that you can get at craft stores or there's fancy kinds or cheap kinds or whatever. And then you need to dip each ball individually and put it down on wax paper, like a special paper that it won't stick to. And then you let them, if you're going to add anything on top, like sprinkles or anything, you can do that. Then, and then that's it. You're done. Right. And then you just put them in the fridge. You chill them, right? Uh, you don't have to. They're better, actually, if you keep them out of the fridge, because if you put them in the fridge, then you maybe have to handle issues with it going from cold to warm. And chocolate, you might not know chocolate if it gets too cold sometimes or like frozen little white spots can come to the surface. And so oh. it kind of ruins the, the prettiness of the chocolate. So, okay. Yeah. So you can just leave them out. That's good to know. Mm, yeah. Oh, thanks. Well, I might give it a try, but it still sounds pretty <laughs> well, hard. Well, I'll help you. <laughs> so, Meg, I hear that you're quite the baker. You like mm. to bake brownies, cookies, things like that? Yeah, I love to bake. It's pretty relaxing for me and kind of fun, uh, kind of a creative outlet, baking. Well, everybody notices it in the office when we see you bring in brownies for your students, and we're all jealous. We wish we were in your class. So what, what's what's it with baking? Like, is it just something you do to mm. relax? Um, yeah. Well, personally, I love sweets. Like, I um, would eat only sweets if my body could handle it. Right. But I try to eat regular food, too. So I think I inherited that from my mom. But so because I love sweets so much, it ends up being really fun making something uh, like brownies or cookies. Um, and for the creative outlet aspect, um, I love to make cupcakes or cakes and I don't know if you've heard of cake pops and no what's a them. what's a cake pop a cake pop is like a little piece of cake on a stick coated in chocolate oh really that yeah. sounds pretty good so in America right now they're getting pretty popular there's some people are saying it's the new cupcake so I don't know if you know a few years back cupcakes got pretty popular and so now we have cake pops um, and I was in the process of starting a little cake pop business before I moved to Japan so um, it's really fun because you can make the cake pops and it takes a while, but then you can decorate them in all these really creative ways for different holidays or parties or birthday or just cute things. So, um, yeah, so the creativity plus something sweet makes it fun for me. That's awesome. But what cake pop, is it like a corn dog, but like a cake? <laughs> no, it's just like a little round piece of cake. So the process is you should bake a cake like normal yeah. and then sift it up so it's just tiny little crumbs. So ruin the cake that you've made, sift it up till it's just crumbs and then mix in just a little bit of like cream cheese frosting uh -huh. and it makes kind of a dough, a formable, moldable dough. Uh -huh. And then uh, you mold balls, put it on a stick, dip it in chocolate and then you can decorate it. So it, it can be chocolate or like a vanilla a colored type, you know, you can have different colors. Things wow. Like that, so. Cake pops. Yeah, yeah. So cake pops are probably my favorite thing to make, but also decorating cakes. I took a couple of cake decorating classes um, and making frosting and, you know, using the special frosting tools to swirl it on yeah. cupcakes or whatever. So, um, so yeah. So have you ever made uh, uh, like a wedding cake or anything like that? Mm, I did actually make one wedding cake. I never really wanted to make wedding cakes because they're very – complicated and there's so much pressure for it to be extremely perfect because it's someone's wedding yeah. and so but there was uh, a couple that I knew who were just doing really like low budget cute wedding and they weren't too concerned about it being a huge cake they just needed something smaller and so I did a couple of tiers and it was actually a chocolate cake so it wasn't even white but so I did one chocolate cake but I've done cake pops for a few weddings as like favors for the guests 
Wow, the cake pops are just the mm. thing. Yeah, cake because they come out so cute. I actually have a cake pop set that I can make where it looks like a little bride and a little groom, like a little <laughs> right. tuxedo. And so yeah. those are probably my most popular ones for weddings. Um, and I also, before cake pops, I was making truffles. So that's another thing that you can also decorate in a cute way. Wow. Well, we'll actually, we'll talk about that more in the next interview. I'd like mm. to ask you some questions about truffles. Sure. So, Sadi, talking about ocean sports and being on the ocean, maybe you could talk about your ocean swimming experiences in Ogasawara. Yeah, I love swimming, you know. It's so peaceful to be there in the ocean. And, um, and the, o the ocean in Ogasawara was very clear and you could see so many fishes and I'd love to go swimming and and be immersed in the ocean. It was like another world. It was very beautiful, but there was one time. Oh, that time. What, 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 what happened? Um, my friends had come to visit and so we went to, we went fishing. But we, before they started fishing, I decided to go for a swim. And I, I swam and I could see all the way to the bottom of the ocean. And I see this fish, but they're actually not fish. There were sharks. There were white tip sharks. Wow. There were four of them at the bottom of the ocean. And I just remember, in, you know, that one thing you have to do is to keep calm. So I did that. I swam out. I told my friends, there are four sharks down there. So get me out of here. So they got me out of there. But my heart was beating so fast. I was so scared. Were they dangerous, those sharks? Well, they're, um, they're not dangerous. They might be able to, to like bite a finger off, but I didn't want that to happen either. So I, as soon as I saw them, I came out of the place. Yeah, but that was so scary. Wow. Ogasawara sounds beautiful and amazing and dangerous all at the same time. That's right. So Mark, uh, what about you? Do you have any encounters with fish? With fish? Well, I remember that fish in, don't you remember when we saw it together? We were swimming in that beach called Cominato and <gasps> we swam out around that, those rocks where we always went and we're looking, we had our snorkels on, it's all peaceful and pretty and like just tranquil and we're looking at all the fish and then suddenly that freaky fish that like, started staring at us. Do you remember that? Yeah, with huge eyes. Huge eyes. And then it started coming towards us. That's right. So in the middle of the ocean, we decided, okay, let's just split. We and, you split. Know, it, we were swimming away from it and it was swimming after us, this little fish. Like. It was It was very small. It was like 30 centimeters long, but it looked really scary. Yeah, we were quite far out from the from the beach and we did split up, didn't we? And like, then what happened? I went that way and you went that way and guess which way it went? My way. <laughs> And, and it if, chased you all the way into the sea, into the right. beach. So I was, I was swimming really quickly and trying to get out of the beach and it was very close to me and I thought it would bite my, my, my toes, but it didn't do anything. But I can't forget that time that a small fish got me out of the ocean. It was so weird, wasn't it? Like fish don't do that. <laughs> they known. don't. And it was the only fish. Like there were no other fish around. Mm, strange. Mysterious. Okay, Julia, we're talking about types of people. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some more that we can discuss. So the next one is worrywart. Are you a worrywart? I guess when it comes to some things, maybe, yeah. Like sometimes I get insomnia and I know it's because I'm, my brain is worrying about stuff. Right, you just can't let it go. Yeah, which is kind of why I took up yoga, meditation, because uh, just calming down those you know those thoughts that are just going crazy around in your head mm -hmm. so i i would be a worry what if it wasn't for my yoga practice i think the yoga helps me keep my mind calm oh cool but i have that natural tendency i think okay so what about things around the house are you a clean freak <laughs> No, <laughs> no, I am uh, messy, like uh, ridiculously messy. I don't see mess. I don't see it. It's like oh, a blind no. spot. So you're a slob. 
Yeah, <laughs> kind of, yeah. And this is the one thing that drives my husband crazy because he's very tidy, he's very clean, very neat. Ah, likes so you guys things are yin and yang. Yeah, he likes things to go in the proper place and he likes things to be tidied up, put away. And for him, it's very a sort of a therapeutic thing. It's, I guess, the mirror of his mental state. If there's a mess going on, he feels uneasy. So he needs to tidy up in order to kind of be focused and calm. I'm kind of the opposite. If if everything's too tidy and neat, I get a bit freaked out. Sorry. I like I'm comfortable in mess. <laughs> Very good. comfortable in mess. Comfortable in chaos. Yeah. Well, uh, that leads us to the next one. Maybe this relates to your husband. Mm -hmm. Is he a control freak? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> He is, yes. So he can you explain be... what a control freak is? Control freak is someone who likes to be in control, has to be in control all the time of all things. <laughs> <laughs> and if there's not, if there's disorder or something's left. It, it causes him stress. Yeah. It causes him stress. So just simple things like maybe like a house guest. While he's a very friendly and generous and warm person, having an extra person in the house makes him uneasy because it's a, a factor that he's out that's out of his control mm, yeah so how about uh other things like uh are you a like a video game junkie or a tv junkie um there are certain games that i have to take off my phone because they will eat away my time. Right, like, like Angry Birds and stuff. Stuff like that. The, the ones that are just really simplistic ones, things like Tetris and putting squares in boxes right. and, and, and Bejeweled where you change, you know, moving things around. Those kind of games I can get very readily addicted to. So I, I, have, to, I have to be careful. I had a, um, I had like a brief intense fling with Tekken, this like fighting games. I was oh. really into fight fighting games and playing. Wow, yeah. that's hardcore. Yeah, but it was short lived, <laughs> and I I felt it was like an unhealthy obsession that I had. Yeah, yeah, you can just yeah. <clears throat> yeah but it was yeah, it was. Great. I mean, I enjoyed it when I did it. It was uh, fun. So Julia, uh, let's talk about types of people. Okay. All right. First one, are you a fitness freak? A fitness freak? Huh. I'm fairly fit, but I'm not a freak. No, I'm not a fitness freak. No. No. So you exercise, but it's not like you do it all the time. No. And I do some un unhealthy stuff as well. I like to drink and I'm a former smoker and yeah, no, I'm not a fitness freak. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, a fitness freak is like somebody who does it, who exercises compulsively. I indulge in bad stuff too, so no, I'm not a fitness freak. Okay, so that leads us to the next question. Mm -hmm. Are you a party animal? Uh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, too old now. <laughs> but when you were younger, you were a party think, animal. Uh, yeah, I'd say that was probably the type that I most uh, most fit, fitted into. Oh, nice. I was never a party animal. No. No, I've always been pretty, pretty uh, tame. I've always been pretty tame. Yeah, I was pretty wild. When really? I was younger, yeah, yeah. So you used to drink, smoke, stay yeah, up late? Yeah, 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 all that and more, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come home in the wee hours of the morning? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. That's cool. Okay, uh, next one would be, um, do you know anybody in your family who's a couch potato? Couch potato. Because I know that you're not a couch potato. I'm not a couch potato, no. I... My brother sometimes demonstrates couch potato traits. Yeah. He likes to play video games and stuff like that, and he'll spend a lot of time watching movies, and so he does spend a lot of time sedentary compared to me. He makes me look like a fitness freak, I guess, because he doesn't do so much exercise. <laughs> right. And so for people listening, the couch potato is somebody who watches a lot of TV and sits on the couch. Spends a lot, a lot of time on the couch, yeah. Um, well, how about the similar personality trait of the bookworm? Are you a bookworm? A bookworm? No, but I think my husband's probably a bookworm. Yeah. So he spends just a, a lot of time reading books. He reads very fast, so he gets through a lot of Ooh, books. He's a speed reader. Can't, yeah, he's just a, he's a very fast reader, and he has to read all. He has to have a book with him all the time. He cannot. 
a waiting room or on a train or any situation where you've just got to sit around. He cannot do it if he doesn't have a book. Yeah, you know, I live alone and that's that's a terrible trait that I have. I cannot sit and eat and just eat without something occupying my attention. I have to read or I have to be like watching something on the computer. And if I go to a waiting room or anything like that or I'm on a plane, I'm the same. I have to have something to read. It drives me nuts. See, I can't read on transport because I get sick. It makes uh, me sick. It makes me nauseous. I get seasick. Yeah, yeah. So I don't have a habit of reading on a train. A bus or a car. Oh, my God. No, I can't read. <laughs> no way. But my husband reads everywhere all the time. Oh, that's cool. Now, there's a couple that are kind of, that are not as nice. They can be positive or negative. Like, for example, a helicopter parent. A helicopter parent, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> so a helicopter parent is basically a parent that just hovers over their child all the time. They're always uh -huh. <laughs> worried about their child. They, they follow them everywhere. They want to know what they're doing at all times, and they just worry a lot. They're so oh, worried. that sounds very stressful yeah. as a parent. They're always worried their child's going to get hurt or something, you know, or that they just are, are just overprotective, I guess. Okay. So are you a helicopter parent? Um, no, I don't think so. No, no. I'm very happy for my daughter to have independence. So Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. So you don't want, like, if she goes outside for a few minutes or if she's, you know, uh, you hear some clanging in the next room, you don't go rushing over no, no. I, I wait for the, the tears <laughs> before I go over. <laughs> uh, smart, smart. And then recently, because of a very popular book, we have what's called A Tiger Mom. A Tiger Mom? Yeah, A Tiger Mom. Sounds cool. Is it a positive term? or is It is it kind name? of. It actually it comes, the tiger, I think, comes from the Asian reference. It's like for an Asian mother. Uh -huh. And it's basically really strict, really driven. Like, really uh -huh. push your kids. Make them study hard. Demand good grades. Demand uh -huh. that they do extracurricular activities. Really push them to have high-paying careers or successful careers. Uh -huh. Do well academically, stuff like that. From, uh, from very young, does this... Is yeah, this... from very young. The woman, who, the woman wrote a book. I think it's actually called Tiger Mom. And she was a Yale professor, and I think she was of, of Chinese ancestry. And she raised these very successful daughters. And so she wrote a book and basically saying, you need to be strict and push your kids and demand excellence. I think that's what she, she wrote. <laughs> is the tiger, is it reference to like the Chinese horoscope then maybe? Like the characteristics of the tiger for that year? No, actually, I just think it has to do with uh, being a tiger comes from Asia. I think, oh, okay. that's, I think that's it. Well, a tiger does have a pretty kind of aggressive or driven sort of image like right. when a tiger gets something in its sights you know like yeah yeah you know. totally no so, i'm not so much a tiger mom no. so you're a soccer mom more of a soccer mom i think yeah yeah, yeah. that's good yeah that's what i would want a soccer mom soccer mom <laughs>